Hello everyone this is part 2 of what if Naruto had a proper teacher, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. D rank mission Kakashi talk to the team about the art of subterfuge. Never reveal your strength to the greater shinobi world, let people underestimate you. Naruto scowled, but I want to be Hokage, if I hide my strength no one will respect me. You have a long way to go before you can become Hokage Naruto. For now follow my orders, do not display what you are truly capable of, Kakashi ordered. That also means you Sasuke. You have a reputation for being a genius and were the rookie of the year. So I want you to fix this perception. Sasuke looked stunned, what do you mean? It's simple Sasuke, Kakashi explained. I want you to pick a fight with Choji at the restaurant they like to eat out at after training. But I'll defeat him easily, I beat him at the academy and since then I've only gotten stronger. Kakashi gave him an eye smile, that's why you'll throw the fight. Let him defeat you in front of everyone. Sasuke scowled he understood the purpose of hiding your strength but it gnawed at him. He was a Uchiha he had his clan pride to think of. Kakashi eyed the young heir, it won't be forever but for now it's best if everyone thinks this team is trash. Sasuke narrowed his eyes, HNN. Sasuke thought about it and considered that this might be another of Kakashi's little tests that he threw their way. Thinking about it rationally what was a little humility compared to what Itachi had done to him. If this little farce would cause him to stay in the good graces of his sensei and allow him to progress in his training, then so be it. Fine but it's going to be hard to look that bad. The group went to Choji's favorite barbecue spot. Before they went in Kakashi said, I consider this your first test on subterfuge, if you fail I promise you no C rank missions for a month. The team shuddered at the thought of even more D rank missions. Even with Naruto's clones they still were incredibly boring and frustrating to deal with. They walked in doing the best to act normal. Ino was the first to spot them. Hey, look everyone my Sasuke-kun came to visit me. The young blonde jumped up to give Sasuke a hug. Sasuke stepped away and snarled, I did not come here to see you. You're a pathetic fangirl on a pathetic team. Between the laziest ninja and the biggest fat ass in Kanoa I'm surprised you can even succeed on D-rank missions. Stay away from me. Joji slammed his hands on the table and growled out, what did you call me? Kakashi shouted out harshly, Sasuke, apologize right now. Sasuke grimaced and walked over to the now standing larger boy. Sorry, fatty. Joji saw red and swung at Sasuke. Sasuke ducked and struck out with a slower than normal kick. Joji easily grabbed the leg and pulled Sasuke hard sending him careening to the ground. Joji jumped up and then body slammed his weight onto Sasuke. Sasuke could have rolled but he was here to lose at his sensei's instructions. Instead he made his eyes unfocused to make it look like he was stunned when he hit the floor. Sasuke regretted not moving when the crushing weight knocked the wind out of his lungs completely. Joji pounded Sasuke before Kakashi and Asuma quickly pulled him off the boy. Don't you ever call me fat. I don't care who you are. The entire restaurant was shocked. The Uchiha heir had just been beaten by Choji. Granted Choji wasn't bad for a shinobi but he was middle of the road as far as Genins were concerned. Kakashi apologized to Choji and would make sure his student was properly disciplined for his rude behavior. Sasuke was bleeding from the mouth and a rib ache but he was able to stage her out under his own volition. Ino looked shocked at what had happened. Her first instinct was to yell at Choji for hurting her Sasuke-kun but after a second thought she realized Sasuke had acted like a complete jerk. She still thought he was hot but if his personality was so abrasive maybe she should tell Sakura that she could have him. Naruto also apologized. Sorry about that Choji but Sasuke is a real jerk. I wish I was on your team. Choji grunted and returned to his food. Sakura huffed and said, you're just lucky Sasuke wasn't expecting to get attacked otherwise he would have creamed you. Shut up forehead, Ino responded. Let's just eat in peace. Naruto was agreeable but Sakura feared Naruto's ability to stay in cover so she said, all right fine but we're leaving. Naruto looked confused, we are. Yes Naruto Barker. The pink haired girl grabbed her teammate by the scruff of his orange jumpsuit and marched out of the restaurant. 
After they were a bit away from the restaurant Kakashi congratulated Sasuke, well done, I'm impressed you were able to get past your pride. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. Tell me Sasuke, do you know the other reasons I told you to do this? HNN. Sasuke was not in the mood to guess. His sensei gave him an eye smile, pride kills in battle. I wanted your pride to take a blow so you won't act like a foolish ninja when a real battle begins. Arrogance is a death sentence. If you take that lesson to heart then I have succeeded as your Jonin sensei. Sasuke stayed silent and kept walking. Kakashi knew this had been hard for his student but it had been necessary. Due to Sasuke following his instructions it was time to provide the carrot. It was time to unlock the Sharingan. And I know just the person who can help me with this. Break asterisk it had been another exhausting day of training with Team 7 for Sasuke. He disliked some of the things his sensei required of him however he could endure them. If it made him stronger then he would endure anything. Today Kakashi had them use Kawarimi no Jutsu substitution Jutsu to race against each other. Using that Jutsu as fast as they could with logs spread 10 meters apart it had been a 200 meter race. Sakura had gotten off to an early lead, her chakra control a strong advantage in this type of race. Sasuke had quickly caught up though. After the fifth substitution she had needed to rest in between substitutions. Sasuke had won the race and immediately saw the battlefield implications. Being able to do this move quickly would mean the difference between life and death. Sasuke made it back to the empty Uchiha district. The place was a ghost town, all thanks to his brother Itachi. Every time he saw it would swear vengeance anew against his brother. How could he have massacred his entire clan? How could he have left him all alone? Hot rage burned within the young orphan, he would make Itachi pay. Sasuke sensed another presence just as he reached his home. He whirled around hand on a kunai as he saw two figures approach. They walked without haste, one was a male shinobi in middle years and the other was a kunoiki that looked to be in her early twenties. Both wore a wagaku or forehead protectors. The male wore dark colors, brown and gray that seemed to blend seamlessly with his surroundings. It was form-fitting and he looked to be carrying nothing but a single scroll at his waist. The kunoiki had an assortment of kunai and other sharp implements attached to her vest and had a short curved sword on her left side. Her outfit showcased a slim figure revealing curves that most adolescent boys would have drooled over. Sasuke warily watched as the pair approached. What were Iwa Shinobi doing here? Don't come any closer. Why are Iwa Shinobi within the borders of Kanoa? The two figures stopped. The female eyed Sasuke with hungry eyes while the male responded. Greeting Sasuke-san. We have come from Iwa to make you an offer. An offer. Yes the Suchikage wants to extend the hand of friendship to you. Leave Konohagakur and join a village that will help you gain strength. In Awagakur you will have tutors and instructors who will give you personal attention. We can help you bring back the Uchiha clan faster than this pathetic village. Sasuke was not the most patriotic of shinobi. But to have his home casually insulted by foreign shinobi simply wasn't acceptable. HNN, from what I remember in the academy this, pathetic, village defeated Iwa during the last war. Both foreigners scowled, the kunoiki actually hissed at him. The male responded, that occurred because of the yellow devil. He paused, and back then Kanoa had a full strength Uchiha clan that could also fight, right now I only see you. Sasuke scowled at being reminded once again what Itachi had taken from him. There is more to this offer. Iwa wants the Uchiha clan flourish again. You can have your pick of kunoiki to partner with, as long as you attempt to propagate your clan monthly you can choose any female shinobi you wish. Instead of being enticed by the offer Sasuke was disgusted. He hated the fangirls he had to put up with, now an entire village wanted to use him for his genes. They didn't care about his strength or his goal, they just wanted him to help spawn a clan of Iwasharingan users. Sasuke took careful note of his surroundings. There did not appear to be anyone else around. The two from Iwa were probably John and Level. They moved with confidence and he could sense their chakra. Fighting them would be foolish, he decided to pretend to consider the issue and then report this to the Anbu immediately. Give me time to think on it, can you return tomorrow? The kunoiki barked out a laugh. Boy do you think you can fool us. You could have had even me if you agreed. But it's obvious you aren't interested. The older shinobi shook his head in disappointment. My apologies Sasuke-san but if Iwa cannot have your bloodline then no one will. 
his hands blurred with the seals as he shouted. Doten, Dosekiru, Earth style, Earth Dragon, Sasuke was ready for a possible attack. He jumped straight back and landed on the wall of his home. A dragon-shaped mass of earth smashed where he had vacated just a split second afterward. The kunoiki launched a half-dozen shurikens at him that Sasuke hastily blocked with his kunai. Sasuke clung to the wall with his chakra and then leapt up onto the roof. The enemy was waiting for him there a sadistic grin etched on her face. How did she get here so fast? She drew her curved blade and licked the tip of it. Ready to die boy. Sasuke threw a smoke bomb down to hide his actions. He threw a kunai at her as a distraction and made his break. A blade slashed out of the smoke, he barely avoided taking a serious wound. As it was he had been nicked on the shoulder. Sasuke tried to back away but his enemy was too fast. Her blade was everywhere and it took every ounce of skill Sasuke possessed just to keep from being sliced open. His kunai parried an attack and he tried to lash out with a surprise kick but his opponent used her own leg to block and then used the same leg to kick him across the face. Sasuke turned with the blow to avoid serious damage. Rolling in the direction of the kick he threw his kunai to free up his hands then rushed through the necessary seals. Katen, Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release, great fireball technique. She dodged to the left, avoiding being burned to a crisp. She lunged back into the fight. Sasuke took another cut, this time across his ribs. Sasuke had lost track of the second shinobi. This wasn't good for the last Uchiha. He couldn't defeat his current opponent and even if he could get the edge no doubt her partner would come in and finish him off. He didn't have time to dwell on this since all of his concentration was on the fearsome Kunoiki who was slashing like a dervish. Too slow boy. Sasuke doubled over, he had blocked high to avoid a descending strike and the Iwashinobi had rushed forward and hit him with a flying knee to the solar plexus. He collapsed on the ground struggling to breathe. His dark-haired opponent smirked down in triumph. Dai. Her blade whipped forward and Sasuke used the substitution jutsu faster than he had ever done so in his life. The kunoiki whirled instantly knowing where he had switched to. Sasuke tried the new jutsu Kakashi had taught him. Raten, Shoku, lighting release, jolt, she sidestepped the jutsu, again faster than his eye could follow. The enemy nin laughed and stalked forward. Only this time she seemed to be taunting him. She was moving slowly and deliberately. Almost as if he wasn't worth her time. Sasuke snarled and charged her. His kunai smashed into her blade, even her block had been slow. Instantly he saw her body flex, she was going to kick him again. This time he saw the move and ducked under her foot and slashed at it with his kunai. She hastily tried to move, and was mostly successful but he had at least drawn blood from her calf. Her eyes were furious and a vicious gleam started to show. All right you stinking brat, you are going to pay for that. Sasuke readied himself when he heard Kakashi's voice call out, that's enough Anko-san. Sasuke's eyes widened. He looked at the Iwashinobi who had just displaced the henge that surrounded her. He now openly stared at the oddly dressed leaf Tokubutsu Jonan. What the hell Kakashi sensei? Another one of your damn tests. Sasuke furiously glared at his instructor. Ma, relax Sasuke, you aren't going to die. Doesn't that make you happy? Sasuke kept his glare steady. I did this for you, as a reward for being so diligent in your training as well as putting aside your pride. Sasuke stared blankly at him. Kakashi tapped his eye. Sasuke's eyes widened. The Sharingan. That's why your movement slowed down. Anko laughed. Are you sure he's a genius Kakashi? Sasuke glared at her. So this was all to get my Sharingan unlocked. You could have killed me. You weren't pulling your blows. Anko snickered, I had it under control, and besides from what Kakashi tells me, the easiest way to unlock the Sharingan is to be in fear of your life while trying to watch someone fast. Sasuke resisted the urge to lash out at the both of them and only stopped himself because he knew it would be futile. Kanoa's snake mistress then said, well it's time for me to get going, remember our deal Kakashi. Kakashi nodded once, hi, just remember to keep quiet about tonight. Anko shunshined away, leaving Kakashi alone with Sasuke. Sasuke was torn between relief he wasn't going to die, triumph at unlocking the Sharingan and anger at the Jonin for putting him through this. With the Sharingan you will be able to learn Jutsu very quickly, we'll begin tomorrow. And of course do not reveal it to anyone outside of our team. Sasuke breathed out slowly and let his anger out, 
Hi Kakashi Sensei, and thank you. Kakashi smiled beneath his mask and jumped to the next rooftop back to his own home. Break asterisk it was drawing close to the end of the second week of Kakashi's training regimen. All of his students were finally getting the level the academy should have gotten them to. Kakashi supposed it could have been worse, two weeks was only two weeks after all. He thought about the progress each had made. Sasuke had unlocked the Sharingan greatly expanding his ability to fight in close quarters. In addition it allowed him to copy Jutsu, Kakashi had already shared several with him. Unlike everyone else without the Dojutsu learning ninjutsu was a piece of cake with the Sharingan. It wasn't perfect, the Sharingan saw almost everything but since each shinobi's chakra system was different it had to be adapted to the user's very own chakra system in order to get maximum effect. But as a learning tool the Sharingan was unsurpassed. Even Naruto's cage bunch and training technique paled in comparison. Beyond just the Sharingan, Sasuke had begun to act as part of a team. He was motivated to help the rest of Team 7 so he could progress further and faster. His comments to Sakura after their spars were a lot less harsh and his insights he provided Sakura had helped. Moreover Sasuke realized that as opposed to being a hindrance his team could actually help him get stronger. His pride was still there but now it was hidden as the boy forcibly suppressed it. Kakashi knew part of it was an act. Sasuke still thought he was the latest and greatest shinobi to join the ninja corps. At two weeks the elite Jonan would take it, after all if you fake something long enough you start to actually become it. It was a problem for deep cover Anbu operatives and Sasuke had none of ANBU's personality retention training. Before he knew it a little humility would no longer be an act but part of his personality makeup. Sasuke's conditioning was on point as well. He had taken to the weights extremely well and now moved even faster with the weights than he had without them. It was time to increase them. He was a long way away from Rock Lee from his, eternal rivals, team but he had made a good start. Naruto was the other genin who had improved by leaps and bounds. His taijutsu was now up to acceptable levels. His movements were far more efficient and actually resembled that of a shinobi. Soon it would be time to have him pick a fighting style beyond the core basics the academy taught. The weights would eventually make him taijutsu monster. Because of the unnatural healing and stamina gained from the QB he would catch up with Guy's prize students in no time. Kakashi had him at double the weight Sasuke was currently wearing. The first day with new weights was killer for Naruto but by the next he was already starting to get used to them. Naruto had also started eating healthy, the changes were subtle but when Kakashi looked with his Sharingan he saw that Naruto was starting to fill out appropriately. The extra nutrients would hopefully give the boy a growth spurt soon. Naruto's personality was still hyperactive but he was starting to control it. His knowledge base had increased significantly and when Kakashi had last quizzed him on the bingo book Naruto had answered all of his queries correctly. Kakashi had also taught Naruto Futon. Daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough, to Naruto. Kakashi had to twitch when he found the training area littered with fallen trees thanks to his students' excited overuse of the technique. His next lesson would be to teach his team how to combine the Katen, Gokaku, fire release, great fireball technique, and futon, daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough, together for maximum damage. Sakura was also impressive. While she still had a long way to go in terms of increasing her stamina her drive was surprising. Kakashi had spied on the girl while she did her morning and evening routines and she had not flinched from completing them religiously. Sakura's chakra control was as fantastic as it had been but now she was gaining chakra reserves. By the end of the week she too would be able to use Katen, Gokaku, fire release, great fireball technique. Technically she still wouldn't have the chakra reserves for it however because of her extreme chakra control she could still make the jutsu work, it just wouldn't be as powerful as a normal shinobi's. Of course that will be after less than a month of chakra conditioning work. Give her another month and she'll be able to use it just as well as anyone, Kakashi thought to himself. After she mastered that technique he would give her an entry-level genjutsu to use, then she would need to make a decision on which path she was going to take. Medic Nin or genjutsu specialist, either one would enhance the overall capabilities of Team 7. Kakashi settled into his humble abode. After a long day of training his genins then doing his own physical conditioning and training he decided to relax by reading one of his Ika Ika novels. A new one had just come in and he had been looking forward to it. 
He had been tempted to relapse into old bad habits and just read it while his genin trained but he had forced himself not to. Tomorrow would be a day dedicated to team tactics and combination attacks. If they took to it well enough he might throw them a bone and let them go on their first c rank mission. Team 7 had just completed another D-ranked mission. All of them were getting sick of them. Naruto especially had been vocal about it. Kakashi had put him on his back quick for his lip. Impressively enough the boy had blocked his first two attacks before Kakashi had put him down. He wasn't going at maximum speed but that had still been impressive. I know all of you are itching to prove yourselves but haste makes dead shinobi. These next lessons are going to be critically important. Teamwork is the key to all the great teams. Ino Shika Cho being the famous one of my generation. Individually none of them are inferior shinobi but they are not standout fighters. Together they have taken multiple teams on at once and emerged triumphant. That famous group is actually the parents of Choji, Shikamaru and Ino, Sakura realized. All three genin looked ready and eager to learn. Our motivation, what a beautiful thing it is, Kakashi Riley thought to himself. All right first up I want Sasuke to use Katen, Gokaku fire release, great fireball technique, and Naruto you will use futon, daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough. Kakashi walked up to a tree and carved an X over the center of its trunk. This is your target, oh and Sakura stand back a bit. Futon, daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough. Katen, Gokaku no jutsu, fire release, great fireball technique. The two ninjutsu collided together and blew the tree apart. The firestorm smashed the scorched the tree into pieces. It continued on to blacken the trees behind it. Kakashi had one of his clones use a water jutsu to put out the flames that had caught a few of the trees nearby. The genin merely stared with wide eyes. When you practice this technique don't use it on any more trees, otherwise we'll lose our village name Sake, Kakashi joked. Naruto let out a yell, that was amazing. That attack could destroy anything. Kakashi's eye twitched. Naruto there are plenty of defenses against the attack, who can name a supplementary jutsu that could stop this attack. Sakura answered, Kawarimi no jutsu, substitution technique. Kakashi graced her with an ice smile. Correct, attacks like the one you saw can be defeated with minor chakra output. Naruto squinted with his eyes. Then what is the point? Why did we learn these jutsu if they aren't going to help? Kakashi answered, because sometimes there is nothing nearby that can be used to switch places with. Additionally if the shinobi is caught unprepared this attack can hit them before they realize the danger they are in. Or the shinobi is using their own jutsu on you, so not only do you counter their attack but crush them with this. Maybe your comrade put them in a genjutsu, even if it only lasted a second it would be long enough for this jutsu to kill. And of course there is the ever-present number one shinobi killer, arrogance. Surely a genjutsu couldn't beat my defense a higher ranked shinobi might say. Well this will come as a big surprise and possibly a fatal one. Now do you see the purpose? Naruto rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Sasuke had thought of some of Kakashi's scenarios but not all of them. The combination of the two jutsus actually rivaled the destructive power of some ranked jutsus. Sasuke once again re-evaluated the benefit of having a team. He was starting to see several advantages to having strong allies at his back. Sakura was impressed with the damage done by the jutsu and wished her chakra reserve was higher. Her sensei had said she only needed a little bit more reserves before she too could use the katan jutsu. When that happened she could also be a valued member of the team. Sakura could also sense that Kakashi had meant the genjutsu comment for her. Sakura was falling in love with the concept of being a medic nin but would keep an open mind when Kakashi sensei taught her a genjutsu. This is a kill move and should be used with caution if we need the target alive. Speaking of which let's talk about protocol for keeping enemies alive, Kakashi told his team. If dealing with an unknown shinobi everyone should fight to kill. I've mentioned it in previous lesson but it bears repeating. Kill quickly, a wise shinobi knows that they are in danger until the opponent is dead. Kakashi gave Naruto a look, Naruto here will be calling out our opponents based on the bingo books I've had him memorize. If the enemy is Chunin or lower, it is safe to attempt to capture. If you recognize a Jonin level foe, let us know and we will fight to kill. Capturing an enemy is significantly harder than killing one but information is life, sometimes the added risk is worth it. Kakashi took a deep breath as the next point hit close to him. 
If the goal is to capture someone alive but your comrade will perish unless you unleash a deadly jutsu then unleash the deadly jutsu, Kakashi commanded. His tone took one of reverence, those who don't follow rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. The infamous copycat Nin looked carefully in each of his genin's faces. All of them had acknowledged what he had said. All right moving on, subterfuge is a basic shinobi art that isn't used often enough. Due to Naruto's mastery of the cage bunshin we have a wonderful tool to use. Sasuke thought about some of the tactical implications and smirked, having that many extra bodies had lots of advantages. Naruto when a battle begins you should attempt to flood the area with another 20 to 30 cage bunshin. Henge a few to make them look like us, while you do this Sakura will make regular clones to make it more confusing for the enemy. They won't be able to henge but will add to the distraction. At that point Naruto you are to call out if you identify the enemy. We don't need fancy code words, just identify the threat. Naruto copped his head to the side, what type of information should I provide? Kakashi responded, rank primarily, any known tactics or specialties. Remember if Chunin or lower we go for the capture, if it is a Jonin we kill. Kakashi turned to Sasuke, meanwhile you will activate your Sharingan and determine if our attackers are using any illusions, you will do this even if we are facing bandits, ronin or samurai. It is easy for a shinobi to pretend to be something they are not. I knew an Anbu operative who assumed the bandits were just bandits and he lost his life when the hidden shinobi blew his head off. Sakura shivered. She could only imagine what kind of jutsu did that. She rubbed her arms a bit, Kakashi was serious. The life of a shinobi was life and death when they entered the battle. If everything is as it should be then no need to call out anything. If it is a jonin then Naruto's clones will engage the enemy, feel free to add ranged weapons and jutsu as you like. Killing the enemy before they get close diminishes the risk you face in the battle. Kakashi eyed Sasuke, I'll repeat this for you Sasuke, shinobi battles are not the place to test, your abilities. That's a good way to get killed and where will your ambition be then? You will electrocute burn and pierce enemies from a distance. Sasuke frowned but responded with a, hi sensei. Sasuke paused, but only against John and threats, otherwise I can get close correct. Kakashi nodded. Time your attacks so they work together. Not just with a jutsu combination but with any move. If you throw a kunai with an explosive tag the shinobi will probably jump in one direction. As soon as you determine that direction unleash your attack. Because the Sharingan allows you to see even minute muscle twitches and glances, you are the clean up Sasuke. Naruto and Sakura will make them move and then you will finish it. Sasuke understood his role and was pleased with it. He was the executioner, it seemed fitting for an Avenger like himself. They drilled various combination moves and attacks, they also discussed what to do when faced with certain situations. Kakashi drilled the tenets that he operated by over and over. Teamwork first. Never assume you've won. Don't talk about your abilities. Kill quickly. Kakashi was pleased with how the team was coming together. Towards the end of the day he started Naruto and Sasuke on the water walking exercise with his clone and started working with Sakura on Genjutsu. The Genjutsu we will be learning is the technique I used on you. It is not a powerful genjutsu but it will be a great starting point, Kakashi explained. The technique is called Magen, Narakumi no Jutsu. Demonic illusion, hell viewing technique, Sakura's eyes widened, that's a basic genjutsu. The one that made me see Sasuke dying in front of me. Kakashi eyed the genin, yes. The genjutsu is pretty basic, for a variety of reasons. Kakashi held up his index finger as he said, one, it doesn't change what you see, it only adds to the victim's senses. This means unlike other genjutsu that completely obscures the victim's five senses and replaces it with their own version of reality this one just adds one scene. Kakashi held up a second finger and continued, two, it only affects two senses, sight and hearing. Your sense of taste, touch and smell were not impacted. This makes the jutsu quite easy to detect and why I was not surprised that you fell for it so easily. Kakashi raised a third finger, and finally it does not reveal the victim's greatest fear, instead it reflects the victim's most probable recent fear. Sakura scrunched her brow as she thought about it, can you explain that a little to me a little bit more thoroughly? Kakashi complied, if I had used this jutsu after having dinner with your family you may have seen your mother or father dying. It all depends on the emotional bond you have with individuals. The jutsu isn't even specific to that, 
it could be failure to realize a dream or desire, either way it is not necessarily the deepest or darkest fear someone has. Thank you Kakashi Sensei. How do I make the Genjutsu work? Kakashi explained how Genjutsu worked, how it attacked the enemy's chakra and took over their senses. Triggers were most frequently sight but some shinobi even used sound or smell to initiate them. In theory I suppose it can be done by taste and touch but I have not seen a genjutsu function that way. Sakura eagerly drank up all of the knowledge that was given to her. Kakashi showed her how to infuse her chakra into her victim's chakra network. With Sakura's excellent chakra control it wasn't difficult at all. Kakashi also used it on Sakura again, this time she saw Naruto, Sasuke and Kakashi dying before her eyes. Knowing how it worked she was able to ignore the effect. She decided to test it by walking up to Sasuke and touching the image, it wavered as she did so and then dissipated. Her sensei taught her how to break genjutsu as well. Knowing you are under a genjutsu is half of the battle. After that you can flood your chakra system with your own chakra breaking the effect, or you can cause physical pain to yourself. Neither method is foolproof but a skilled genjutsu specialist should have an easier time breaking out of one. After Sakura tried a few times they called it a day and Sakura went home to complete her evening exercises. Sakura was an intelligent kunoiki. After the teamwork exercises she could see the advantage of genjutsu. If she could pin an opponent in place for even a second or two then Naruto and Sasuke could hammer them with their jutsu combination. Perhaps I should focus on genjutsu, but if Sasuke-kun or even Naruto ever got injured I'd just hate myself forever if I couldn't heal them because I passed up on medical nin training. Sakura tossed and turned that night. Medical training or genjutsu. Medical training or genjutsu. Both had their advantages. With genjutsu the team's jutsu combination kill combo would be quite dangerous. If they could kill the enemy before anyone could get injured wasn't that better. Sakura shivered when she thought about killing. Kakashi talked about it a lot and it was now her biggest concern. Killing someone that was trying to kill you was one thing. But Kakashi talked about how the best way to kill someone is end their life before they even knew it was in danger. Could she really kill in cold blood? Sakura continued to toss and turn as she wrestled with that question for most of the night. Break asterisk at the three week mark Kakashi finally allowed him to take a rank C mission. The final jutsu he wanted them to master before taking a higher rank mission was the shunshin. With it they had a powerful tool to escape with if they needed to. The shunshin was a misunderstood jutsu. To a civilian it looked like a teleportation jutsu. In reality it was just a shinobi moving incredibly fast using chakra to boost their speed. The jutsu had its weaknesses, while the speed was great it did not allow a shinobi to move their limbs faster, it essentially just pushed a tremendous amount of momentum in a single direction. It could even be dangerous to oneself if used improperly. The Sharingan wielder has taught his students the dangers and when to use it. Sasuke, using the Sharingan had learned it the quickest, next was Sakura but Naruto wasn't too far behind when he created a dozen clones to help him learn it. With that in place Kakashi felt the time was right to give his team a, real, mission. Team 7 reported to the Hokage Tower with Naruto literally jumping up and down with excitement. Kakashi stopped the team, Naruto if you want to go on the mission settle down. You are embarrassing the team. Naruto forced himself to calm down. Sorry Kakashi sensei. Kakashi was handed the mission folder. Him we will be escorting an architect to Nami no Kuni Kakashi scanned the paperwork. Our client is concerned about increased bandit activity preventing his workers from completing a bridge. This should be a simple C-ranked mission, bandits will be no match. But remember arrogance can get you killed so I want everyone to be on their toes. The three genin nodded and Kakashi motioned them to follow. It was time to meet their client. The Hokage was there and Naruto had to avoid saying hi to his Gigi. Kakashi had been very firm with Naruto on how to act around a client. The client stepped out drinking from a bottle. He took a swig and said, what? I paid for bodyguards and all I get are little kids. Naruto scowled, who are you calling a little kid? Kakashi's eye twitched. The Hokage merely chuckled. Tazuna-san, you have one of the Leaf's best shinobi, an elite jonin with you. You will be more than safe in his capable hands. Naruto pointed his thumb at himself. And me. I'm going to be the next Hokage and then you'll have to respect me. Haruzan attempted to suppress his mirth at Kakashi's expense. With his crystal ball he had seen exactly how hard Kakashi had trained Team 7. 
he had also seen how hard Kakashi had worked to get Naruto to act like a proper shinobi. Kakashi's frosty tone was not lost on Naruto. If you have done Naruto it is time to prepare for the mission. Meet at the front gate and prepare for travel, since we are escorting a civilian the trip to Nami no Kuni should take two days. Naruto suppressed a groan, he had already made his sensei mad and the mission hadn't even started. I'm going to do better, Kakashi sensei is going to be proud of me for the rest of this mission. Naruto made this silent promise and intended to keep it. Two later they were all at the front gate. Tazuna looked impatient to be on his way. Kakashi eyed him, something didn't feel right about the mission. Kakashi decided to let things go, it was doubtful that anything on this mission would pose a challenge to a shinobi of his caliber. Furthermore his team had dramatically improved with his training. All the same he would be on his guard, overconfidence was the sure path to death. All right Naruto since we are leaving Kanoa I want you to create eight clones. Have them fan out at variable distances within a mile of the group. If one of them sees something have it dispel so you can then inform us. Try to have them be at least a little stealthy, Kakashi ordered. No problem Kakashi sensei. Naruto quickly made the required number of shadow clones and sent them on their way. Tazuna did not know much about shinobi abilities but that one sure looked useful in keeping him safe. He felt a bit bad about lying to the shinobi especially with the fact they were just kids but this was his country's only hope. During the first hour of the journey Naruto was keeping a sharp eye out for any sign of danger. In fact he was a bit too jumpy as he twitched and prepared for battle every time a woodland creature moved. Kakashi cautioned Naruto, Naruto while it's good you are taking it seriously, it's important that you stop sounding false alarms. Naruto flushed all of the talk about death and killing and battle tactics had made him a bit jump. Kakashi added, and keep in mind even if you did spot an enemy coming it's not always a good idea to sound the alarm, if they feel they have the surprise when they don't tea it can be a nasty surprise. So calm down a bit. Hi Kakashi sensei. The journey continued for another couple of hours when Kakashi saw a puddle of water. It hadn't rained in a few days so it was quite out of place for his finely honed senses. Without changing his movements in the slightest Kakashi reached out with his senses and determined that there were two enemy shinobi hiding. Unlikely a Jonan level enemy would make that mistake. I'll be ready to step in if things go poorly but my team needs real shinobi combat, Kakashi thought to himself. Sure enough after a few moments as the group walked by the puddle two shinobi each wielding a large gauntlet attacked. They struck at the most dangerous target first. Kakashi completed an undetectable replacement jutsu right as a chain that connected the two gauntlets and shinobi together was wrapped around him. Kakashi stayed hidden off to the side, as he watched what his team would do. Naruto shouted, Chunin level. Missing nin from Kirigaku, hidden mist, affinity with water and they use poison. He had shouted this information as he performed the cage bunch and deploying over a dozen shadow clones. Sakura created regular clones that dashed forward attempting to distract the two Chunin level opponents. Sasuke activated his Sharingan and saw Kakashi hiding off to the side. HNN guess he thinks we can handle them. Sasuke smirked as he threw a few Shuriken at the pair of Shinobi racing for them. The Shuriken were avoided but right behind them came in the Naruto horde. The first wave had raced forward while the second had paused to henge to look like Sakura and Sasuke. The missing nin used the chain to good effect, catching two of the clones right away. One of the clones attempted a flying kick that the enemy on the left ducked. Another clone attempted a strike at the torso of the one on the right. A quick jab made the clone puff into smoke. The final clone of the first five came in right behind the clone that had just been dealt with and kicked him in the kneecap. The blow was strong and Gozu's leg buckled underneath him. The second wave of clones had arrived mingled in with Sakura's images. The mass of opponents they were suddenly faced with surprised them. Gozu had to release the chain and quickly defend himself as multiple clones attacked. Several more went puff but Naruto just grinned and made more. Sakura fired off a pair of kunai further distracting the two. Sasuke chose that moment to strike. As Meizu blocked the kunai with his gauntlet Sasuke dashed forward with surprising speed. His fist slammed into his opponent's ribs. Meizu grunted and tried to bring his poison-tipped gauntlet around but with the Sharingan spinning it was telegraphed and easily avoided. A Naruto clone kicked the back of Meizu's calf sending him to the ground. Sasuke took full advantage and grabbed the gauntleted arm and snapped the enemy shinobi's arm. 
a kunai appeared in his hand and was held at the demon brother's throat. Meizu was beaten and he knew it. Gozu was favoring one leg while the Naruto clones rushed him. He could not get free of the clones to come help his brother. Naruto saw one of his clones jump in the air and he knew his next move. Gozu was popping clones left and right but since they were only coming in two or three at a time he had several to deal that were always easily replaced. The clone that leapt into the air was quickly hit with a Kawarimi from the real Naruto who was now in the air and in perfect position to use his jutsu. He flashed through the hand signs in mid-air. Futon, Daytopper, Wind Release, Great Breakthrough. The blast of air crashed down at an angle on Gozu. The blast destroyed several clones but that was just fine by Naruto. The gale force wind slammed Gozu into the ground with tremendous force. Because it was at an angle he slid a good 15 feet, the abrasive ground cut through his clothing and ripped up skin. Even before he finished sliding several clones landed next to him and pinned him down. One held a kunai at his throat. Move and you die, the Naruto clone said in a calm voice. Sakura had been defending Tazuna after throwing two of her kunai. She was relieved and happy that the battle was over. It had been their first shinobi battle and it was won without any injuries. Kakashi congratulated them and quickly secured their two prisoners. He attached a chakra seal and secured them tightly enough not even a jonin could escape. He then turned to the bridge builder, we need to talk about what is really going on. Tazuna looked around, what do you mean? Kakashi raised his killing intent and Tazuna backed up as the oppressive pressure bore down on him. The Jonin's voice took on a cold and ominous tone. You lied about the mission parameters, that could have gotten us killed. Were you in league with this shinobi? Was this a trap set for us? Kakashi did not think that was the case at all but fear could be a powerful motivator in making someone talk. As he suspected Tazuna stumbled over himself trying to explain himself. I'm not working with them. I swear. Tazuna held his hands up as he backed away. They were trying to kill me to stop me from building the bridge. Sasuke smirked, Sensei is good. Hi Tazuna-san I never doubted they wanted you dead, but why are their shinobi trying to stop you from building the bridge? Kakashi asked the question in a more conversational tone and Tazuna relaxed. The architect sagged. The Jonin believed him but he had given it away he was expecting the attack. All right I'll tell you everything. It all started when a despicable man by the name of Gato came to our land. Tazuna proceeded to tell the story of the suffering of Nami no Kuni. The four leaf nin listened to his story. Naruto in particular wanted to save them from Gato who reminded him of the bullies in the village who had mocked him and tried to take away his will to go on. Gato was doing the same thing, demoralizing and controlling an entire land simply because he had the resources to do it. Naruto shouted out, we are going to save your country and kick out this Gato guy. Believe it. Kakashi interrupted, Naruto not so fast. This was supposed to have been a C-ranked mission. Any mission that involves enemy shinobi is automatically at least a B-ranked mission. Genin do not take B-ranked missions. HN, Sasuke responded. But we have to help them, Naruto shouted. Sakura remained quiet, she wanted to help the people of Nami no Kuni but shouldn't this be handled by a more experienced team. Yes Tazuna had said that they couldn't afford to pay for a B-ranked mission but what if Sasuke-kun or Naruto got hurt? Inna Sakura screamed, coward. You're afraid? If you want to be a shinobi you have to be willing to fight. So go out there and fight. Show Sasuke-kun what you are made of. Cha cha cha. Sakura bit her lip and then quietly but firmly said, we can do it. We are a team and look at what we have accomplished. Please Kakashi Sensei, please let us continue the mission. Both Naruto and Sasuke looked at her, Naruto grateful and Sasuke was appraising her in a new way. Kakashi looked at his genin team and thought about the situation. Likely they would face another threat this time it would probably be a jonin. If a jonin was their opponent Kakashi was confident he could handle the threat however battle was never a certain thing he would have to be on his guard. Is my team ready? Perhaps but I'll need to test how far they are willing to go. Sasuke would have no qualms and I'm confident about Naruto. But Sakura. The leader of team 7 told his team, I have decided how we should handle this. Sakura it will be your choice. If you wish to continue this mission you must prove you are fully committed. Tazuna looked on hopeful. Naruto was confused. What do you mean? Sakura already said she wanted to continue. It's simple. 
I know you and Sasuke have the killer instinct to fight with the intent to kill. I don't know if Sakura does. In order to prove to me that she does have that instinct she must kill one of our prisoners. Everyone tensed at the announcement. Sakura froze, her eyes widening in horror. Sasuke narrowed his eyes and tried to think of a way around Kakashi's test. This might work, he thought. Kakashi sensei these two might have information. We should keep them alive. Kakashi laughed, niece try Sasuke. I appreciate you trying to work as a team however both of them probably have the same amount of information. There is no point in leaving both alive. Sakura will have to pass this test. Sakura's mind shrank away from the task. In the middle of combat she felt she could kill if it meant saving Sasuke-kun's life or that of another leaf shinobi. But in cold blood. After the battle is finished. It was unthinkable. But if she didn't do it the people of Nami no Kuni would continue to suffer under the tyrant businessman's boot. Sakura looked at the two missing nin and swallowed thickly. She looked at the faces of her teammates. Naruto looked shocked at the turn of events. Sasuke looked pissed, likely because he thought she wouldn't go through with it. Tazuna looked at her with pleading eyes. Sakura's hand was shaking. How could her sensei make her do this? Kakashi raised his voice, did you think being a shinobi was glamorous? We are assassins, thieves, spies and infiltrators. If you aren't willing to kill you aren't going to be on this team. Don't mistake my meaning Sakura, if you don't kill you will remain on team 7 I will give you future chances. However at some point or another I will require that you kill someone, if you can't do that then drop out and work at the Kanoa hospital. Sakura didn't want to let her team down. She didn't want to let the people of Nami no Kuni down. She pulled out a kunai. Her hand trembled. Tears welled at her eyes. This was the moment of truth. A heavy weight pressed down on her chest. If she did this her path in life would be different than she had ever dreamed it could be. Would she walk the killer's path? That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.